This was a uh, this was a g very grave and momentous step that we were forced to take today to move a contempt citation against the Attorney General of the United States. We did not relish doing this, but we have no choice. Attorney General Barr, having proved himself to be the personal attorney to President Trump rather than the Attorney General of the United States, by misleading the uh, public as to the contents of the Mueller report twice, by not being truthful with Congress, uh, has shown himself to be uh, the personal attorney of the United States rather than the Attorney General. And now, he has taken it a much greater step farther in turning the entire Department of Justice into an instrument of, uh, of Trump personally, rather than an instrument of justice and, and a representative of the United States. Um, by seeking to evade, to bar all uh, subpoenas, and the President said it, that they will resist all subpoenas, not just with reference to the Mueller report or to the Russian attack on our democracy, but with reference to anything, to reference to the Department of Justice's uh, turnaround on their position in court on the Affordable Care Act, to references to investigations of uh, security clearances, to references to um, uh, the, the decisions to tear babies away from their mothers at the borders, to everything, they are uniformly uh, rejecting subpoenas from Congress. Uh, this means that they have decided uh, to oppose the role of Congress as a coordinate branch of government representing the American people. They are stonewalling the American people from all information. Uh, and this cannot be. We cannot have a government where all the information is in the executive branch, where the American people and the Congress are stonewalled as the information that they need to make decisions uh, and to know what's going on. So while this is stonewalling information with respect to the Russian attack on our democracy with, in 2016, with respect to the President's campaign uh, cooperation with that attack, to the President's obstructions of justice in seeking to stop the investigation of that attack, it goes far broader than that. It's an, an attack on the will on the ability of the American people to know what the executive branch is doing and to have responsible government. It is an attack on the essence of our democracy, and we must uh, oppose this with every fiber of our being. And that's why we, be, we, we, we today did uh, referred a, uh, uh, a contempt citation uh, to the House floor. The House will have to vote that contempt citation uh, to, to begin the court battle. Uh, there can be no higher stakes than this attempt to, to arrogate all power to the executive branch away from, the con from Congress and, more important, away from the American people. We've talked for a long time about approaching a constitutional crisis. We are now in it. We are now in a constitutional crisis. Um, Benjamin Franklin in 1787 was asked when he exited the Constitutional Convention, what type of uh, government have you given us, sir? And he said, by a woman who asked him the question, he said, a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Now is the time of testing whether we can keep a republic or whether this republic is destined to uh, change into a different, more tyrannical form of government as other republics have over the, over the centuries. We must resist this. This is far broader than republican or democratic or even the rights of Congress. This is whether we can put limits on the power of the president, any president, and then executive branch, and hold the president, any president, accountable. That's what is at stake here. We cannot flinch, and we will not flinch. Mr. Mayor, but if, you're, if, you're in a constitution, if you're in a constitutional crisis, why are you resistant to moving forward with impeachment? Well, I'm not going to talk about impeachment, but that may be the, the short answer is that may not be the best answer in, a con in this constitutional crisis. There are a lot of considerations for that, and that may not be the best answer for this constitutional well, crisis. What's the best answer? Would be well, the best answer? I mean, if, hmm? you're, if you're not thinking about impeachment right now, do you think this goes to the floor next week and then you can court? Also this will go to the floor rapidly. I don't know whether it's next week or not, but it'll be on the floor soon. And how does that compare with, you know, I know Democrats are doing tax reforms, and that could go to the floor. 
for uh, potentially McGann uh, being held in contempt? How are you guys going to balance that and prioritize? What comes first? Well, we'll see what happens. We are. Uh, we are still planning uh, to to to, to uh, uh, have Mr. McGann appear before us, to have Mr. Mueller appear before us. Um, the president has made that more difficult by ordering Mueller not to appear and by ordering McGann not to submit uh, documents that we've subpoenaed. And by the way, these documents, the White House makes a nonsensical claim and the Department of Justice this morning for all these various documents. They say they're executive privilege. Um, most of them are not executive privilege. And remember something about executive privilege. It's not, an, it, it's not a blanket uh, uh, bar. Nixon, in the Nixon case, the tapes, you all remember or have read about the tapes, um, these were the most sensitive to executive privilege. They were private conversations between the president and his advisors, and the Supreme Court ruled eight to nothing that the interests of the public in justice and in and an accountability outweighed the interests of the, pre of the president uh, in privacy and ordered those tapes revealed. And of course, when the tapes were revealed, it led to Nixon's uh, resignation, so, number one. Number two, executive privilege is designed to get candor by the president's advisors to advise him. Um, once that has gone public, once the president has said it's okay to share those conversations or that evidence or whatever with the Mueller investigation, with your private attorney, with whoever, once it's been published, there is no more privilege because it's done already. Everything we have requested, the unredacted part, all the material in the, unre in the redacted parts of the Mueller report, all the material that we've requested in the various subpoenas, None of it is privileged because all of it, they waive the privilege by enabling it to go public to, to, the, to Mueller or to whoever. So it's a nonsense claim. We will win these court fights because the law is, is one-sided. And when the president or, or, or Attorney General Barr or anybody else uh, cites executive privilege in these cases, they are not being honest. They're not being honest because there's no real claim at all. Chairman Nadler, are we to perceive this as a, you say these are going to be court fights you will be fighting, as a civil contempt then? Is there going to be any criminal part of this or any inherent that we've heard about? It'll probably be a civil uh, contempt. And what, why not go with inherent as some of your colleagues have, have suggested? Because. And the well, that, I, I, don't want, I, don't want, I don't want I don't want to answer that question because I'm not sure we won't. You're not sure you wouldn't go with inherent? That's right. You said that the president has ordered Mueller not to testify. Are you referring to his tweet uh, last week saying Mueller should not testify? Yes. How has that made that harder? Has Mueller specifically told you that, that he doesn't feel he can testify? No, but it obviously puts a lot of pressure on Mueller, and the discussions are ongoing. How are the discussions? Are they breaking down? They're ongoing. Are, are you going to go to court and ask the judge to unseal the grand jury material without the Justice Department? Yes, we will. Now, in every prior case, uh, the Attorney General has joined the Judiciary Committee, or, or I think sometimes other committees, but has joined Congress in asking for uh, a grand jury material. In every case, uh, well, the, all the major cases that has been granted, uh, the Attorney General, this Attorney General, Barr has simply said he won't do that. He's not given a reason why he won't do it. He's not given a reason why he's breaking precedent and refusing to support uh, what will be our application for that for the grand jury information? Uh, he has not said he'll oppose it, but he's said either they will oppose it or not, or, or take no position. Uh, but every in every previous case, uh, the uh, attorney general has joined uh, the c committee in requesting the release of that grand jury committee uh, information. It's always been granted to the committee, and the committee has handled it uh, responsibly. It hasn't leaked, and it's been used properly. Guys, will you talk about it? Question. No. Will you issue a subpoena for the other? When will you issue the subpoena for the other four former White House officials, including Hope Hicks? Uh, when it's when it uh, seems most advisable to do so. Are you so. concerned though that this move to invoke executive privilege will essentially be a chilling effect for? Of those? course, we're concerned. We're concerned that uh, that the president's declaration and the apparent uh, uh, um, 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 intention to deny all information is going to be a chilling effect or or more. Uh, remember. Uh, in every case that people have talked about, whether it be uh, uh, former Attorney General Holder or, or last year 
uh, when, the, when this committee under Republican control demanded all sorts of, very, of grand jury information and uh, FBI interviews and all sorts of things, and were given 880,000 pages. Uh, in every, every situation, there's been an accommodation and there's been more or less information given. This year, we have gotten not one page of information in respect, in, in reference, in, in response, rather, to any subpoena, nor have any other committees in the House. There have been absolutely not one single page has been given. A total stonewalling of Congress, a total stonewalling of the American people, and that is a, an assertion of tyrannical power uh, by the President, and it cannot, it cannot be allowed to stand. The American people have to have a government responsive to them. And that means the President and the Congress. So do you think this is a fact-gathering for impeachment, or is a wholly distinct matter? I see this as a fact-gathering, which may or may not lead to, I mean, as I've said many times, we, we need the facts, we need uh, all the information, and decisions like that or other things will be made down the road when we have the facts. But if you keep stonewalling, if you can't get the facts, how, if you can't get the facts, how are you going to proceed? We are going to have to insist on getting the facts. Thank you very much. Thank you.